uh, Calvin Dick. Uh, joining him this morning is Anna Cron on the violin, Michaela Cron on cello, and JL Penner on piano. So welcome, we're glad to have you here. Sorry. Sorry about that. I wasn't very clear. And we're also happy this morning to welcome Bakerview's uh, Pastor Emeritus, Harry Heidebrecht, who many of you know, and he's going to share a story with us uh, later in the program. Uh, I want to thank you all for uh, wearing masks uh, and for following our uh, safety protocols. Um, I know that it can be really hard to breathe. If you need to give yourself a minute to have a break, I think that's okay. Uh, I just would really ask that all of everyone wear a mask while we're singing. Uh, we'll have one song that we'll be singing and it will be especially important uh, during that time. Uh, so thank you all for uh, being willing to follow those protocols. Okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs>
Thank you. That was entitled Wedding Day at Trollhagen, uh, written by Edvard Grieg, and was written in 1896 as a memorial of the 25th wedding anniversary of Edward Grieg and his wife Nina. Now, you might be wondering why we're all dressed as we are. Well, the four of us were asked to play a wedding just three weeks ago in Yarrow for one of my former students, Nikki. Can you, perf can you picture the wedding party, the bridesmaids and the flower girl and the ring bear all processing down to this very music? And then the bride, Nikki, processed down to Gabriel's oboe, which we're going to play a little later in the program. And um, she, however, was not accompanied by her father. When, when Nikki was quite young, her father died. And so Nikki was accompanied down the aisle, escorted by her five brothers, which was a really beautiful and poignant scene I'll never forget. I thought if any of you would like to process down the aisle during Gabriel's, Gabriel's oboe, you're welcome to do so. We have a pastor here and uh, we can, you can recommit yourself or if there's anyone who would like to be married this morning, I'm sure we can fit that in. Our next piece is a very creative piece by um, the composer Mozart. This is a creative duet entitled A Tabletop Duet. So there's one sheet of music and the, and the music is laid down between the two performers and one violinist reads it top to bottom and the other violinist reads bottom to top. And cross your fingers, hopefully it will harmonize. I hope you enjoy Der Spiegel or The Mirror by Mozart. Just to prove it, you see, here, this way, and over this way. Next, we will play the swan from Carnival of the Animals. Now, if you're not familiar with Carnival of the Animals, it is a humorous suite written by the romantic composer Camille Saint-Saëns. Um, so he wrote 14 movements, all representing a different animal. So of course, the movement I will play for you today represents a swan. Now, the Oxford Youth Orchestra will actually play the whole suite in October, so stay tuned for that.
the second of six songs for voice and piano by Felix Mendelssohn on Wings of Song was set to accompany a poem by the German poet Heinrich Heine. On Wings of Song, sweetheart, I carry you away, away to the fields of Ganges, where I know the most beautiful place. There is a garden of red flax in the quiet moonlight. The lotus flowers await their charming little sister. The violets giggle and caress and gaze up at the stars. Secretly, the roses tell each other fragrant fairy stories. The pious, wise gazelles hop near and listen, and far away the sacred river's waves roar. There we will lie down under the palm tree, peace and love and drink and dream our blissful dream. Sweet Remembrance of You by William Joseph was played at my father's memorial in April 2020.
Here is Sweet Remembrance. I will be playing Rhapsody in G Minor by Brahms. Johannes Brahms was a composer in the Romantic era, which is around the 1800s. Although he lived in the Romantic era, a lot of his pieces represent styles from the Classical era. He was a very good composer of symphonies and sonata form. You may be wondering what a rhapsody is. A rhapsody for piano is a piece that contains many contrasting sections in dynamics and moods, etc. It, also contain, it is also usually very free in style because it is not based on a particular form. The Rhapsody that I am going to play, however, is based on sonata form. Listen very closely for the theme at the beginning to come later on in the piece. When you hear it again, that is how you know you are hearing the third main section of sonata form called the recapitulation. Also listen closely for large contrast in dynamics and large left hand chords. I hope you enjoy Rhapsody in G minor.
Gabriel Zobo by Ennio Marconi is the theme song from the movie The Mission. One of the Jesuit priests named Father Gabriel plays the oboe as he seeks to bring Christianity to the people of Argentina and Paraguay. Now, as I mentioned before, we played this piece uh, as Nikki, the bride, walked down the aisle of Yarrow MB in August. And I thought uh, just 10 minutes before the concert started this morning, Bill Reimer walked in with a violin made next door to the church in Yarrow. This is a Friesen violin. And uh, so I thought, well, that would be appropriate to play uh, Bill Reimer's Friesen violin for Gabriel Zobo. Well, thank you. That's wonderful. A lot of different themes that have emerged, and it sort of climaxed with this last piece. I'm working on my own trilogy of stories. My first one, I told you about at one of our dessert concerts. It was the story of my little red wagon. Today's story is about my little pet lamb. And sometime in the future, I will tell you about the journey of my little red testament. You recall the nursery rhyme. Harry had a little lamb. 
His face was white as snow, and everywhere that Harry went, the lamb was sure to go. I was perhaps 11 at the time, the day my father returned from a Hutterite colony near Coldill, Alberta, with a little orphan little lamb. He was not only mine, but ours to share with my younger siblings, to love and care for. I wince every time I hear people say, sheep are dumb or stupid, especially if I hear it from a pulpit. When the writer of Psalm 100 said, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture, I'm quite sure this is not what he had in mind. Sheep may be defenseless, but they are smart in their own way. How else would they ever have survived as a species? We loved our little pet lamb. He was too young to survive on his own, so we bottle fed him like we would a baby. He loved being petted and cuddled, as all pets do. Children from the neighborhood would come over to play. And like Mary's little lamb, he made the children laugh and play. I have photos to prove it. A two-year-old child petting his nose. Children playing chase and run. And when he was older, we hitched him to a toboggan in winter. And he gave children rides. When we would leave home, he would stay near the house. And when we returned, he would come bounding to greet us. As my pet grew older, he remained playful, to the point of becoming mischievous. My father was a church janitor, and we shared a yard with the church and the Bible school. When the girls in residence would go to the outdoor biffy in the morning, he would run and hide around the corner and wait for them to emerge. When they did, he would lower his head and pretend to charge. The girls would scream and run to the dorm. Although he considered it fun, they didn't. One fall day, my mother noticed that our hens weren't laying like they used to. We had a neighbor boy, perhaps six or seven, who everyone called Hobo. One morning we discovered that he would sneak into the hen house and fill his pockets with eggs. On this particular morning, our lamb was waiting around the corner. And when the boy emerged, the ram lowered his head as if to charge. Poor hobo ran to the safety of a haystack and crawled to the top. From our window, we could see hobo on the haystack, emptying his pockets of egg yolk. You might say the yolk was on him. One spring day, we sadly discovered that my father had not brought the lamb home to be a pet, but to provide wool and meat for the family. That's also the day I lost my appetite for mutton. Years later, I did order a rack of lamb in a restaurant. Though it was well done and the presentation was excellent, I ate slowly and only a portion, for I was reminded again of my little pet lamb. Now you understand why I wince when people call sheep stupid. Like people, there are wise ones and unwise ones. The wise ones do, the unwise ones do not listen to the call of the shepherd. 
they stray from the flock and get lost in the wilderness. And if there is no one there to search for them and rescue them, they perish. There are, however, also smart sheep who know they are loved dearly by the shepherd. They listen for his voice, and when he calls, they come. They, steer, they stay near the shepherd where they are secure. They remain with the flock, for they are communal animals who need each other. They follow the shepherd wherever he leads them, for he leads them in right paths. They trust the shepherd, for they know he will bring them safely home. My heart resonates with the 18th century poet, William Blake. And I first read this poem in an 18th century literature course in university. It's simple and profound. It reads, Little lamb who made thee, dost thou know who made thee? Gave thee life and bid thee feed by the stream and o'er the mead. Gave thee clothing of delight, softest clothing, woolly bright. Gave thee such a tender voice, making all the fields rejoice. Little lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? Little lamb, I'll tell thee. Little lamb, I'll tell thee. He is called by thy name, for he calls himself a lamb. He is meek, he is mild. He became a little child. I a child, thou a lamb. We are called by his name. Little lamb, God bless thee. Little lamb, God bless thee. Thank you, Pastor Harry. We want to close our program by singing together. Um, best we can with our masks on, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
Now wasn't that a wonderful morning? Uh, thank you, Harry, for that lovely story and the poem, and to Calvin, JL, uh, Michaela, and Anna, thank you so much. Uh, this is a difficult season in our world, and this morning uh, all of you have reminded us of beauty and goodness that is always present, so thank you for doing that. Uh, as we leave, uh, just some instructions for how we will do that safely. Uh, we would ask that you uh, just keep your masks on until you're outside of the building. Uh, we will leave uh, row by row, so beginning at the front uh, and all single file down through the middle aisle here and just keeping your distance from one another. Uh, we would ask that you not linger in the foyer, but please make your way outside and you're welcome to stay in the parking lot as long as you would like to have conversations. But we just want to move people uh, quickly out of uh, the space and into the fresh air. So starting at the front, single file, um, out the back doors, and if you go to your right there, there is a covered area there where you entered, or many of you entered, uh, feel free to linger uh, there and have conversation. Uh, there will be a donation box as you leave. Uh, uh, we would gratefully accept any donations that you may want to make uh, to cover the uh, costs of the morning. So thank you so much for coming, and uh, the peace of Christ go with you into the remainder of your day. Thank you.